Hello, welcome to the course PH6 B13 E Computational Physics. The contents of today's lecture is taken from Numerical Methods for Scientists and Engineers by K. Shankar Rao. We will continue to discuss topics from Module 3 Computational Approach in Physics. In today's class, let's analyze projectile motion, which is very, which is very similar to the two-dimensional motion we discussed in the previous class. As you know, projectile is a body projected upwards with an initial velocity at an angle with the horizontal. So, in this case, as you expect, the the velocity and acceleration uh, will have two components: the x component and y component, and these two are evidently. Uh, different. So, if you look at the forces acting on the projectile for the ease of calculation, let's assume that the only force acting on the object is the gravitational force. So, if you take the, the vertical axis as the y axis and the horizontal axis as the x axis, uh, then you have the, the vertical force Fy given by minus mg. So, here we we consider the downward direction as negative and upward direction as positive and there is no horizontal force so f of x equal to 0. So consequently acceleration in the x direction ax is going to be 0 and acceleration in the y direction ay is going to be minus g. And since the projectile is launch at an angle theta with respect to the x axis the initial velocity v naught is going to have two components one is v naught cos theta along the horizontal direction and v naught sin theta along the vertical direction so if you look at all the parameters in the x and y direction along x you have acceleration a x equal to zero and the initial velocity is v naught cos theta and you have the Euler's formula Vxi plus 1 equal to Vxi plus h into Axi and Xi plus 1 equal to Xi plus h into Vxi where h is the step size. Similarly along the y direction acceleration Ay equal to minus g initial velocity is V0 sin theta then Vy plus 1 equal to Vyi plus h into Axi and yi plus 1 equal to yi plus h into vyi. So it's it's very similar to the two dimensional motion just that your initial velocity has two separate components that's the only difference. Let's do a simple problem a body is projected with velocity 10 meter per second at an angle 60 degrees tabulate the position and velocity for the first 0.6 seconds with an interval of 0.2 seconds. Let's write down all the parameters first. Initial velocity V0 equal to 10 meter per second, angle of projection theta equal to 60 degree, and time is 0.6 second, time step is 0.2 seconds, Ax equal to 0, Ay equal to minus 9.8 meter per second square. Uh, now let's calculate initial velocity in the x and y direction vx equal to v0 into cos theta so this is 10 into cos 60 which is 5 and vy equal to v0 into sin theta which is 10 into sin 60 which is 8.66 okay, so these are the initial values now you have to apply Euler's formula step by step and find the, the velocities and position in each of the sub intervals. So, step one in the first sub interval, all the values are the initial values. So, Vx0 is 5, Vy0 equal to 8.66, x0 and y0. We always take the initial positions as 0. So, x0 equal to 0, y0 equal to 0. In the next sub interval vx of 0 0.2 equal to vx of 0 which is 5 plus step size 0 0.2 multiplied by ax 0 which is 0. So this will give you a value of 5 and vy of 0 0.2 equal to vy of 0 which is 8.66 plus step size 0 0.2 multiplied by ay 0 which is minus 9.8 
with value 6.7 x of 0 0.2 equal to x of 0 which is 0 plus 0 0.2 step size multiplied by v x of 0 which is 5 and so you get x of 0 0.2 equal to 1 and y of 0 0.2 equal to y of 0 0 plus step size 0 0.2 multiplied by v y 0 which is 8.6 so you get 1.732 so you keep repeating this so you find position velocity is at 0 0.4 then at 0 0.6 so when you make a table with all these values so you can see since acceleration along the x direction is 0 so you have a constant velocity consequently the, the change in the x position is uniform and the y values change according to the equation given before. Okay. So always remember in a particular sub interval when you make calculation you have to use parameters from the previous interval. That's the only key thing you have to remember. Finally about the Python program this is very similar to the, the two dimensional problem we have discussed before. Sorry for the typo the title of the program uh, has to change let me correct it okay so the program to analyze projectile motion so we have to input all the required parameters like initial velocity v naught the angle of projection ang the final time tf and step size h so i do that using the split function then uh, you need to make some trigonometric calculation, right? Cos theta, sin theta, etc. For that, first you need to invoke the, the math module. I do that first itself from math import star. So all the functions in the math library are available for the program. Now, one thing you have to remember, whenever you use cos and sin function, the angle has to be in radians, not in degrees. So I convert uh, the angle in degrees into angle in radius using the radians function so ang equal to radians ang so now angle is converted into radians and x equal to 0 a y equal to minus 9.8 the initial position and time are 0 so x equal to y equal to t equal to 0 then I print the, the titles of the table. The initial values are already available here. So, so I print all those uh, T, V, X, V, Y, X, Y. Okay. So the calculation, the first sub-interval is over. I need to move to the next sub-interval. For that, I increment time with step size H. In the perform iteration, I invoke the while loop. Inside the while loop, I write the Euler's equation x equal to x plus vx into h, y equal to y plus vy into h, vx equal to vx plus ax into h, vy equal to vy plus ay into h. Okay. So, vx and vy, its initial value you calculate using this particular equation. After that, in each iteration, the value is going to get modified. As as you find the values, you can print them using the print function. Then to go to the next sub interval, you increment the the, the tab using the step size. Okay. So once you reach the final sub interval, you come out of the loop, and that's the end of the program. So as I said, this program is very similar to the two-dimensional program. And that's for today. Thank you.